Welcome to Stunt Stories. I'm Corey Eubanks. And today I have a gentleman that I had to track down. I had to hire private investigators just to locate where he is because he never returns my phone calls. I got him, though, on my show, Mr. John Frazier. John, thank you for being on Stunt Stories. Absolutely, Corey. Anything for you, buddy. I got uh, my pro officer let me... uh... Let me go for this 30 minutes. So. <laughs> yeah, because you've committed a lot of crimes in your day. Well, you know, I got that uh, that sodomy charge reduced to falling too close. So, Oh, thank God. That, that, yeah, that helped a lot. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> you know... <laughs> John, there's a lot of a lot of people that that have been listening to my podcast that kind of only know who the stunt men and the stunt women are, and a lot of them are kind of oblivious as to the special effects men that make us look good or or cover. How many? How many? How many are you talking about? How many a thousand? Spe- oh, thousand what people? Yeah, the five hundred or what are thousand? The, I mean, listening to the podcast. Well, yeah, this is yeah, this is big. No, there's like six or seven of them. Six or seven people. Yeah, at the most on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I really I don't I don't really <laughs> know how many people. Maybe maybe six or seven is an exaggeration. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I don't I don't think they people right now they don't understand that uh, you know our that our our relationship over the years. I I have to let them know that uh, you're. Right now, Corey Eubanks is the gold standard. There's, there was, there's just no one out there. I mean, I can go back to uh, to Terry Leonard, and we did a lot of crazy stuff on Apocalypse Now. But uh, and Corey will talk about that. But but uh, I just want the people to know that, uh, in all seriousness, that um, Corey Eubanks is a fake. <laughs> hey, that's not on the list of things I I, I text message you earlier of things. Wait a minute, that... See, now you wanted me to wing it, but you have a list. That, uh, that's three. That's that's not fair. No, I I text you a list of things that I wanted you to brag about me, when, and that's when, not on the list. I get... <laughs> you know what you through all of the hell you and I have been through. We we've had some laughs together, though. I, I got to tell you that. We've had some good times. We've had, uh, yes, we've had we've had more laughs than tears. I can tell you that. And and you know what? That's a, and that's a good thing. And you know what, John? You you, my friend, are one of those gentlemen when it comes to special effects and pyrotechnics and explosions or whatever roll cages. And you're one of those very few that I know that if if you had your hands in it to have anything to do with it, I know I'm going to be fine. And it's just been such a comfort throughout the years to know that, you know, you've always cared so much about the stunt men and the stunt women and have always had our backs and that's been so greatly appreciated and you know you've you've saved many of us from going to the hospital and getting our feelings hurt well thank you i appreciate that and it's been uh it's it's certainly been a a great run we've had a great team uh, we've there's so many great stunt guys that have come down the pike and and yes we just absolutely uh um you know, want to look out for the brothers, you know, because they, they, they they're still risking their neck for a movie. And that's, uh, and that's it's so just we, a movie. Yeah. And it's just, at the end of the day, it's just a movie, but they, they really, really, really put their, their, their heart into it. So they don't back off. But what, so, wouldn't you say, though, throughout your entire career, that probably, I mean, without a doubt, one of your greatest accomplishments was the gong show? Actually, it was uh, <laughs> probably the Gong Show or Hollywood Squares. I don't remember. It's kind of, I looked on my. I looked on my. It's, it's like somebody said, uh, you know what? He needs 125 credits. We got 124. But throw the Gong Show in. There. But you know what? The funny thing about it is, 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 I don't know how that on my IMDb, but in the early 60s, in the early 60s, when I started in. in uh, in the uh, entertainment business, I started at NBC in Burbank, and uh, I, you know, I had no idea what I was getting into, and uh, I couldn't even spell special effects. And um, but I, it, it's funny, the um, a pr- producer that I had been working for on the weekends while I was going to college, he got me and a bunch of my buddies in the union. 
we were all headed to Vietnam. And uh, he said, look, I'm going to get you guys in the union. And when you get back, you're going to have a job. And, um, and he did that. And uh, all of a sudden, one night, we all got a call to report to NBC in Burbank. And there was, uh, there was actually 11 of us in a line. And I remember the superintendent coming out and saying, okay, you five guys, you go with that team over there. And you five guys, you go with that team there. And you, uh, I don't know, uh, you go report to the special effects department. And that was 1964. And, and it, and, uh, it's, I just stayed with it. And, uh, then I, I, uh, um, after my debut on the gong show, then I thought, you know, maybe I could, maybe my talents are better in features. You, and, do you know, uh, do you know what the first feature was that you and I worked on together? I, I'm going to go with Pee Wee. Yes. I would think that that would be. Pee Wee's yeah, big yeah. adventure. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> How did you know that? Well, because we had a lot of fun on Pee Wee and you were just there all the time. And and it was just like, it was a, it was a, just a pleasure to meet you. And, uh, and, uh, and I knew your dad, you know, so that was a, that was a, that was a big thing, you know? Yeah. Pee Wee's Big uh, Adventure. That was, that was Tim Burton's uh, first movie, wasn't it? I got to say it's right in there. Yeah. It could possibly be that I think he did. Uh, Batman right after that. Yeah. And then yeah, you, you so, did, you did pretty in pink. You did Ferris Bueller's day off ruthless people. Well, actually what, what, uh, what the, what the deal with the pretty in pink was, um, they wanted me to build the Ferraris for the, for the movie, but they couldn't put me on uh, Ferris yet. And so they said, we're going to put you on this pretty in pink and, um, nothing to do, but we need you to start building the Ferraris. And, um, and so, um, cause we went right from that, right to Chicago to do Ferris Bueller. I mean, it was like no waiting. Wow. And, um, uh, and I built that Ferrari in my, uh, for, uh, the guy that, that owned the Ferrari, um, I couldn't even tell you his name. It didn't matter, but he let us use the Ferrari, but he would not let us take it on the street. And uh, so what we basically, that car was used one time. It was used at the end of the movie for the extreme close-ups when Cameron kicked it, kicked it off the jack stand. Oh. And that's the only time that car was used um, in the movie. And up until then, it was, it was our Ferrari that was in, uh, um, in, every, in every scene. And uh, what he did was he let us use his car. It was a... It was a Oh, at that time, I'm going to say a million dollar car to take the mold off of it. And I, we drove, we took the, he took the car up to, uh, Spencer up at, uh, Universal Studios and, uh, they popped the mold off and they made the, the bodies for us. And then, then I get a call from, from John Hughes and he says, um, he says, how far along are you on the Ferrari? And I says, well, we're, you know, we're, we're, we're just getting, really getting into it. And he said, well, here's the problem. I want to use the Ferrari when Ferris picks up Sloan at the high school. And uh, he says, and I can't move it in the schedule. I got to do it in two weeks. Uh-oh. And so I said, well, <laughs> well, we'll get right. You know, so, and we, what I did was I, I went to pick your part, you know, and I, I took my tape measure and, and one other guy and we went looking for a car and we found a Mustang too. And we, we, we cut it. We got rid of the body. We cut off the, we cut off the rails, the frame rails at the, at the, uh, um, uh, head at the, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, Moss Rewards or, um, right at the, at the right at the, uh, give me a word. It sounds like, uh, well, like at the door jams. Is that where you? No, right, well, just in front of the door jams that, uh, God, I can't believe I'm lost for words. Anyways, we cut the rails off and, um, and that left me with everything intact, the transmission, the motor, the radiator, everything fit right underneath that car. And then the back of it, I cut it off right right behind the rear seat and um, and stuck it under there. And we just put two frame rails uh, in between it, two pieces of tubing. And I got to tell you what, I mean, it's, now, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. We got to get the car out. And... We don't have any room to put the gloss. 
pipes. Hmm. And my father-in-law was working with me, and uh, he came over from Warner Brothers, and, and uh, uh, I said, oh, man, I don't know what we're going to do, put the gloss on this thing. So he said, well, look, why don't we just cut a hole in the tubing and run it through the frame? And and that's what we did. I hope you we did. had some stainless steel flex tubing, and we welded it right to the tubing frame. And, and uh, it's kind of funny because it sounded great, but when we were when they were using the car in Chicago, one, one day the the grips came by and they said, "You know, the car is running great, but boy, it sure gets warm on the frame rails." <laughs> <laughs> they said, "Well, that's because the, that's because the exhaust is running through the car." Oh, damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that was uh, John Hughes was just a, just a great guy. Oh, is I he mean, really great director to work he for? He was huh? just a great guy. And, hey, uh, what was this yeah. this movie you did? Unforgiven. Speaking of great directors, what what was the, what was the question? The film that you did called yeah. Unforgiven. Yeah, right, right. Wasn't that with about? Clint Eastwood? That would be with, with Clint Eastwood, yeah. I've never had the honor of working with Clint Eastwood. How how was he as a director? Yeah, he was lucky. He dodged you pretty good. Um, <laughs> God God bless Buddy Van Horn. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's a great guy. Clint's the best. Clint's all business. You know, no meetings. No meetings? No meetings. Or, no, no meetings. How, how do you, you know what you're planning for? Because you basically are writing the special effects. No kidding. You read the script, and you show up with the stuff. And the last thing that, that Clint ever wanted to hear was, I didn't have enough money, or I didn't have enough time. Because we had both. Wow. And, uh, uh, and, and that's the way it was. I mean, he just, uh, uh, he, he's all business. You and, know, uh, the you, hardest thing to work with Clint is, is that the caterer, because he, he goes right through the catering line, you know, with, with, uh, with everybody. Oh, and just like one the of last the crew thing members. You do, well, the last thing you want to do is sit, sit on the other side of him and have lunch because you got nothing to talk about. And, you know, here's a guy, you don't want to say, Hey, how's the family? And, you know, so-and-so he doesn't no, no, it's none of that. So you kind of, everybody kind of looks for where, where, okay, where's Clint? Because you want to get behind him. (laughs) (laughs) So so you could sit him up, you know. I mean, here you're sitting across from Clint Eastwood, (laughs) you know. I mean, my God, it doesn't get any better than that. That's so cool. He's just not a small talk. Well, I, I tell you, I'm I'm very jealous of you because of that, but also I'm very jealous of you because you got to work on Waterworld with David Ellis on the second unit. David Ellis, he, uh, uh, well, you know, and I and I and uh, uh, his uh, son-in-law, you know, was uh, real good friends with Eric, and you know that whole that whole group was just a, a, a surf team, you know, and David was such a nice guy, and. Uh, uh, yeah, he was, a, he was after, we didn't do, you know, a whole lot on Waterworld, but we were kind of like, we were the special, the special unit, you know, and when somebody needed something done, they would come over to the shop and we, we do it for us. We did a lot of stuff in the tank at Paramount. And, um, and it's funny because, uh, Kevin Costner, you know, was there and, and he'd asked me if I wanted to go on, I think, no, actually we were on, um. Uh, Oh, we were on Perfect World, and uh, um, Kevin asked me uh, if I wanted to go over on, on uh, Waterworld, and I said, well, how long will we be gone? And he said, well, we, we'll be gone a year. And, wow. um, and I said, well, I said, dude, I said, I appreciate the call, but I said, I can't do that. And I said, I'm not a, I'm not a, I can't be gone a year. You know, that's when they were going to go to New Zealand. Yeah, that's a long time. Yeah, Hawaii might have been different, you know. You know, but, uh, you know what else, John? But, uh, you have two, you have two films that, honest to God, are two of my favorites. I don't know how many times I've watched The Perfect Storm and just enjoyed it every time. And now I've got my my girls, my twins. They watched Pearl Harbor. Between those two movies, um, my God, I, I just which one would you want to talk about first? Because I mean, Pearl Harbor. I, I've never seen so many huge pyrotechnics and explosions in my life. Um, I think, well, the thing, go ahead, Corey. Well, I go say I, I was going to, I was going to skip right over Castaway because 
I don't know what special effect was in that at all. But uh, <laughs> when you look at well, movies I, like Pearl Harbor and <laughs> the well, we did story. on Castaway. You know, the thing about Castaway was done. It, they were done. Part one and part two was a year apart because they had he had to lose all that weight. But um, so I did the first part and the, the plane crash. That was our big thing. Oh, was, that's right. Was the plane crash with a and good the friend fire of mine, in the water? Jay Ocavone was the pilot. If you recall, oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. okay. Good well, he had me. a lot of water coming at him, and uh, and then um, and then we didn't do uh, part two. You know, it was a year later, and by then, you know, I mean, you know, half the crew is on something else. And uh, well, they actually did a movie in between that. Bob Zemeckis did, and then they did. Then they came back and did did Castaway. Could you imagine but, if Tom uh, Hanks came back and he hadn't lost any weight at all? Give him a year on payroll. Like, dude, you were supposed to lose a hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, I tried. Well, you know the thing about it was though you know and i got so much so much uh, admiration for for bob zemeckis he can make anything he's like you know they have uh we used to call it clint eastwood weather and it it doesn't matter what it is that clint eastwood will make it work if it's supposed to be sunny at the beach and it's and it, or it's supposed to be snowing he'll make it work yeah. they always call it clint Clint Eastwood water, but with Bob, he's just so, so smart with, you know, with coming up with things like Forrest Gump, like just like, uh, how does he, uh, how does he think about that stuff, you know? Yeah, that's And crazy. I was just watching this movie, uh, it's funny because I just was watching this movie, uh, Academy Screener, Finch. Now, he didn't, he didn't, he wrote that, but he didn't direct it and, and maybe he produced it. But, what was funny was, uh, and if you watch the movie, you'll you'll you'll, you'll have to kind of know. Well, we did Castaway, right? It, Wilson was was the volleyball, but Wilson didn't make volleyballs. Oh, they we didn't. We had to go to another company to get a volleyball made. At that time, Wilson did not make volleyballs. Goodyear did. Oh, and oops. and so <laughs> so the the irony is is like you've got. You've got uh, Tom Hanks playing character with, and his friend or whatever is a volleyball named Wilson. And then he does another movie called Finch, where the dog's name is Goodyear. So I, I thought, you know, what an odd name for a dog, right? And and uh, and the robot was on wheels. Uh, so I kind of like did a little research on Goodyear on uh, on. Uh, on the on the web. Well, as it turns out, uh, Goodyear was the first person to make a co company. Well, actually, his name was Goodyear. So, Mister Goodyear was the first guy to make a volleyball. No kid. Yeah, <laughs> and so there you go. You got and because it was not a Wilson volleyball. They didn't make volleyballs. I don't know if they do now. I think they make soccer balls. Yeah, but they wanted a volleyball. That's and crazy. Goodyear, Goodyear made volleyball. He, he's the one that been, so there you got you got Tom Hanks you got Bob Zemeckis you got all these guys and there's your there's your irony you know you got a guy playing a, a stranded guy with a volleyball named Wilson who then plays a a uh, an engineer with a uh, with a with a robot named Goodyear or I mean dog named Goodyear <laughs> but uh, who is his best friend you know Wilson was his best friend in the yeah. castaway. And and Goodyear was his best friend in uh, in uh, in, in uh, I think it's called it's Finch, right? Hey. But you're talking about uh, Pearl Harbor. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. I mean that 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 was absolutely um, that was big. John, would you uh, say that today? Have you done a film that had bigger explosions than that? Or is that the biggest? Uh, That was, um, yeah, because even Apocalypse Now was, in, in that in that day, it was, we did some really big explosions, but, but since then, we've done, Pearl Harbor was probably, uh, um, was, was, yeah, was pretty big. The thing about Pearl Harbor for us was the gimbals. You know, we, we turned that ship over. If you go on our website, you can see, you know, Effectsperts Inc., you can see, um, you can see us turning that ship over. Yeah, that was impressive. 
Man. And that was like the best of probably the biggest <laughs> gimbal ever made and ever will be made. Now, and, is uh, that thing still around, or do you have to disassemble it to get it get it out of there? Uh, you mean when we, when we left there? Yeah. Did you leave it behind? Oh, we cut it. Yeah, we cut it up. Oh. Um, uh, it was it was not the kind of gimbal that we use. It was made to go inside. We made the, the first 150 feet of the ship. Well, we made, and then CGI did the, the last 200 feet. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so that gimbal that we used, it wasn't really a gimbal like we know motion bases and stuff. It it was made just to fit inside that the bow of that ship. Did you design and, that? Uh, yeah, we had we had uh, um, about four guys on that. We had wow. Ross Young engineered that thing. Ross Young is the best. He's he is the thing that makes Ross Young shine is the fact that he has movie sets. He's just not some engineer that makes things go in outer space or something. You know? Yeah, he has movie sets, and that's what really uh, uh, works for us. You know, you know, and we- he made that. That uh, I mean, that ship weighed probably uh, uh, oh, pretty close to maybe six or seven hundred thousand pounds. Holy maybe smokes! More. That's that's oh, a lot and, of steel. Uh, it, well, to balance that thing, we had twenty five trench plates on the rear end of it because wow. it rose up fifteen degrees. When you look at the stunt guys on the on the bow of that ship, it that's when you can see the size of the thing. You know. And they're standing on there, holding on, and then they eventually, uh, you know, as it got lower, you know, they they, they jumped off. But um, and it rolled over 180 degrees. Um, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah, that gonna, much weight, and you controlled it, and you could set it back to number one and do it again. Set it back to number one position and do it again. Yeah, and then they, well, we had we had a mod, we had monitors on it and meters, so we could tell exactly where the weight was and everything, and. Uh, and what had happened was all of a sudden we're looking at the the, the monitor and we go, man, it's sure getting heavy on one side. Well, the sailors, they got lazy. They didn't want to swim around and come back up the stairs. They just hung back onto the side of the ship and it rolled back over again. Oh. And so, <laughs> you know, so all we had to do was just adjust for that. And, uh, uh, and no, no big deal. But, you know, it's just that's why you have, you know, monitors on those things. So you can monitor where all the weight is all the time. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we we had. Some, that was probably, uh, I was go gonna, I was gonna say go we had some fun on the island. Remember the movie The Island? We had that was a lot of work for you guys. We did some we did some car wrecks on that thing. Yeah, I remember and, that. Uh, it was fun. Uh, I had a good time. Yeah, that was that was. Uh, um, I'm trying to think if we did when that's what all those railroad uh, wheels were. Flying off of there. Yeah, those uh, axles. Right at you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that was yeah, with that, that, was, that, that tall, skinny director guy. What's his name? I don't know. Is he still in the business? I don't know. He, was uh, it Steve or Mike or Doug? Uh, Michael something. Hmm. Yeah, his name sounds familiar. Something like an ocean or something. Yeah. I think we yeah. did those Transformers movies with him. Yeah. That, yeah. Now that it's coming back now. Yeah, Michael oh, Bay. That's it. That's it, Michael Bay. <laughs> <laughs> we, you got to admit, we've had some fun working with Michael. You got to. I tell you what, if you're if you're going up and down the IMDb, look at the look at the photos. Go go to the photos. Get get off the uh, credits and go to the photos. I see Transformers. Transformers. Spider Man. Is it Spider Man? Twister. Spider Man got the Academy Award for. You got an Academy Award. Yeah, baby. Was that a mistake? Are you sure? I mean, Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> it's heavy. It's heavy. I thought it was. Wait a uh, minute. Did you really? That is yeah, we, so impressive. We've been nominated uh, 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 12 times. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm looking at a photo of you and Michael Bay sitting in a big director's chair, and he's sitting in your lap like an eight-year-old kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look. If you look, if you look at that, you'll see they had a bumblebee up there, right? Yeah. So that was a reference because that was actually in the commercial. It was a commercial we were shooting, and that was like supposed to be Bumblebee's makeup chair, which is still way too small. Uh, but that was supposed to be, uh, wait, you know, uh, 
which is it was Weech's fault, but you, but they got the idea of the commercial because he never he never said it, but you see how big that freaking chair is. Yeah. And so I got up in it, and they wanted to take my. And I said, <laughs> Michael, come on up there to take a picture of you. And he got up there. And, you know, tell you, you gotta love Michael. You've done so much stuff with him. But, oh my gosh! You know what? You it, know, it's he, it's certainly hard to find a director who has got so much passion for filmmaking, and and hands well, on. You know, our, he makes our job easier because he knows what he wants. His his stuff doesn't doesn't lay on the editing room floor. It goes on the screen. Yeah, and uh, um, he just, uh, um, you know, we kind of have a same personality, and he's. Uh, he demands excellence, and and I demand that in my guys, and, and I always get it. And and uh, uh, he just uh, and he's a yeller, and I'm a yeller, and, uh, um, and a screamer. And, and but you know what? It's just from day one, we've always uh, it. We just it, we've just always gotten along. Well, and, there's uh, that mutual and I really, mutual I really respect, respect that you guys have yeah, for one yeah, another. Just, yeah. You know, and we we've, we've had some. We've had some. You've been around there when I. I remember that one time I had to tell him to take a time out, and uh, because we we were on, you know, speaking of stunt guys, we were on on it was on the island. Mm-hmm. You, you were probably there. I, I witnessed said, it, John. I witnessed it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, he just told Michael to take a time out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, said, I was so. I tell you what, it it, it, it I was so bad. You know, because I said, I said, Michael, look, we're gonna put, we're gonna put the kids. Well, they were kids, stunt kids, right? The the, the guys and and the girl. I've re- I, I wish I could remember both their names, but um, they uh, they your stuff, you know. And I said, look, Michael, I said before we do this, we gotta we've got to talk this down. And I said, uh, give me, you know, just give me five ten minutes, and we'll get everybody in line. We'll know what we're doing. And he said, okay, that's fine, that's fine. But he said, I'm going to go up to the other end. I'm going to get some shots. I'm going to come back. We'll do your 10 minutes, then we'll go. I said, okay. So, well, he ran late, right? And he comes back. He said, okay, let's mount up. And I said, wait, hey, 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 no, I need my 10 minutes. He said, you're not getting your 10 minutes. Let's go. And I said, we'll figure, he said, we'll figure it out on the way up there. I said, no, we got to do it right here. And I, and, uh, and and then and then you know it's, the tension's getting bigger and and the voices are getting a little louder and I said no and then that finally I said you know what you need little boy I said you need a, you need a timeout I said I want you to go over there and stand in the corner and when you can behave yourself you can come out and play with the rest of the kids <laughs> he looked over at Jim Economos and said he said just because Jimmy told me later and he looked over at Jimmy and he said I think he, I think he got me he <laughs> says yeah he got to Michael. <laughs> So, so you know, and I'm going. You know, this is this is it for me. I'm I'm done here. I'm I'm uh, this is my last movie. But you know, there's only one thing you can do. Is I went up. I gave the guy a big hug and a kiss, and I said, "Let's go to work, Michael." Yeah. He said, "Let's go to work." Yeah. And that's the way we. And we've ever we've ended every argument the same way: a big hug and a kiss, and let's go back to work. You're, you're so and, right, though, uh, that he he is that that type of director that demands perfection. And I was always that stunt performer that would give him mediocre and <laughs> <laughs> just something very average. Well, and <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you banks, so, can't you do better than that? I go, no, that's pretty much the top of my skill level right there. <laughs> <laughs> Fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. We had some good times. Hey, I didn't know that you and I both worked on pineapple express. Well, I, I didn't really work on it. I just took the money. I was uh, oh okay. Uh, they, <laughs> they they had a guy and uh, uh, I was I, actually I was like uh, um, it's funny because over at, at Columbia, you know, when Gary Martin was there and uh, uh, Gary called me in and he says I, I want you to uh, take over the the screen gems and he said I want one I want you to do all the screen gems movies and those were you know remember the low budget ones the screen gems and then you had Columbia Pictures and he says you know and this this get the guy for every one of those and they're screwing up and he said you just take it over you go in and make your deal and, and with Glenn and and, uh, and you just you just take it over and so um, so that's what we called the, we called all those guys on screen gems they were the farm team you know and uh 
uh, and then we bring the guys up, you know, but, um, uh, that was, a, that was, uh, that was actually a lot of fun too, that movie. They, uh, but we did a lot of movies for screen jumps over there. And, uh, but most of them were, they were just using my company and, and, uh, and Gary said, you, you know, and Gary was one of those street shooters. There were so many guys that, uh, in, from that era that were just old school, you know, and, yeah. uh, and they just, they, they, they had a great sense. They had a lot of, uh, they always protected people and, but, uh, you know, and I was always Gary's and, and, um, fix it guy. It's like something, you know, just go fix that, you know, and, and see why would the, where that guy's screwing up, and, you know, and, uh, and let's just get, get back to work. But, but, um, yeah, I remember that explosion out there at the bar and I went out there and, and uh, they were starting to load it. And, and of course, I'm the guy that's got to go, okay, you know, that's okay, guys. Now, let's start take. I see you got it all loaded now. Let's start taking stuff out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we, we just, uh, you know, I kind of, I just, I want to fine tune it the way it should, the way I wanted it. And there was nothing wrong with the guys doing it, but, you know, they wanted to, you know, there's a point to where you you got to say that's too much. That's too much gasoline, guys. Yeah, and um, tone it down. You know, it, it's not. It, what, what are you going to get out? Of, you know, and uh, you, you just run the chances of somebody getting hurt. Hey, you know, and, what, uh, John, I didn't ask you, and I'm sorry, I should have. When, when you, I mean, you've got forty five, forty five dominations, eleven wins, and you've got this Oscar, and I didn't even have the courtesy to ask you, what did you win the Oscar for? For the gong show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make it be the gong show. Make it be something cool. <laughs> well, I, I have to tell you something about the, the, the Academy Awards. And, and you know, it, 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 it's a great, you know, no matter what I say, you're not, get, you're not getting that Oscar back. But um, <laughs> um, we won it for Spider Man, and, and rightfully so. When you looked at it, it's it's the thing that that, that about the, about the Oscars is is your peers don't get you there. Your the, the five thousand voters get you there, and you just hope that they know something about special effects. Did you have to but, pay them off? It, Did you have to slip them some money? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's all part of it. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you had to buy your way to the top. No, that is so impressive. Well, I mean, it know, just, there's an really, Oscar the there. The thing about it is that that, that um, I can. Re- I'll go back a little time a little bit, and and we were nominated for um, um, for our. I don't know. I'm sorry. We were nominated for the first Transformers, which was which was a big movie. You know, of its time. Yeah, and we were nominated, and I also did the first, the the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. So, so we got the Pirates of the Caribbean, and we got Transformers. Now, at that time, there was only three movies and visual effects that went to the Oscars. Um, unlike now, they, they because there's so much CGI, they upped it to uh, to five. But at that time. There was only three, and so I got nominated for uh, Pirates of the Caribbean and Trans- the first Transformers. I got nominated for all the Transformers, but that was the first one. Well, and also you were nominated for Twister and Armageddon, The Perfect well, I'm Storm. Just, I'm just a story. There's a story here. You just you interrupted me. I'm That's sorry. It. Let's start from the beginning. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's not the beginning. That was two days ago. So. So anyway, so I'm now, now I'm going to uh, speed it up a little bit. I'm, I'm sitting in the audience in, in London at the Baptist and, and uh, for, I don't even know what movie I got nominated for there, but I don't remember, but all of a sudden, um, Castaway, I mean, uh, um, what's the name of the movie that beat us out? Um, Oh my God! How could I forget that name of that movie? Anyways, this this other movie that wasn't even on the on the on the radar, uh, one in in London. So I looked over my my wife and I said, 
and because the academy hadn't happened yet. And I said, I think we're in trouble here. I said, there's no way that movie can win. There's no way. It's not even on anybody's radar. It, it, nobody even went. The, the T-shirts made more money than the movie. <laughs> and I said, uh, you know, and I said, but it won. It won. And I went, that's not, that's not a good sign. Because we got the, you know, we have the Academy Awards coming up. And uh, um, sure enough, I mean, we're sitting there in the audience and and, uh, and they say they say the names. Now, what they do in the, in the Academy is they always say the, the visual effects supervisor's name first. So they don't have to say the movie. When they say the visual effects guy, you know you won. And all of a sudden, um, they didn't call our name. And it was just like, you could hear a pin drop in the audience. Nobody even heard of the movie that we were up against. Hmm. Transformers, first Transformers, right? Epic work, special effects, stunts, everything. CGI, it was the best. Then uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, the same thing. Big, big special effects, right? And this movie, oh, what the hell was the name of that movie? It had a bear in it. I think they liked the bear. It had a polar bear in it. A polar and, bear. Um, in but the, I can, I can tell you. Neither I of can us can think of the name. Must have been a great, really, really good film. We can't even nobody, think. Had, nobody ever heard of it. <laughs> nobody, no, nobody. The critics gave it a zero. When they came time to, they listed what well, somebody, somebody listed all, all the critics. That there are, there's like a hundred of them. Okay, then they had uh, Transformers, and they had Pirates, and then they had this freaking movie. I don't, the name will come to me in a second here. And and they go down, and they had Pirates checked off, and then this <coughs> of all these hundred critics going down between Pirates and Caribbean, they had every everyone checked off. Either they were for Pirates or they were for Transformers. That movie, what's the name of that movie, Corey? That movie got zero, zero. Not one critic voted for that movie for visual effects. I'll be Not damn. one. Oh, I know the name of the movie. It had a polar bear in it. Yeah, I know the name. I know the name. I know it. I know the movie um, you're talking about. And um, but I'm not going to tell you. Sam Elliott was in it. And, uh, oh, Sam Elliott and uh, um, uh, Nicole Kidman was in it. And so, you know, who knows how they vote. But how, how can you, what, what would be in your mind frame to vote for a movie like that when you've got these other two movies that are, they're double blockbusters? You know, I mean, yeah, they're billion it, dollar movies. It had a more heartfelt story to it. <laughs> no. The subplot had more well, texture. I don't know yeah. why the, who they yeah. why they picked the things they do. It's still mind boggling. It's amazing to me. Hey, well, I, it, I don't know if I can say this on a, on the phone, but you know, I can tell the, the end of the story with the Academy Awards is the best part. But I don't, I don't know if we want to even. Uh, you, you can all. You call me back and I'll tell you the happy. I'm going to tell you there's a happy, there's a silver lining. I think that's a movie, right? There's a silver lining to this story about the Academy Awards and uh, uh, and also in Las Vegas in there. But that's all I can tell you right oh now. Oh, my God. That is such a tease. Well, maybe you could come on another another episode of Stunt Stories and you can share that with us. I don't know if I got anything left in me. How long have we been? Yeah, we've been on this on this uh, conversation between you and I almost forty minutes. So did you have to actually forty one minutes and ten seconds? And I've enjoyed every second of it, John Fraser. <laughs> I have, buddy. It's been too long. Will you come on and do another episode? You know, with I me? was on a movie. I was on a movie. Now, here's a here's a guy. Here's a here's a stunt guy, right? Uh, Hal Needham. Oh my gosh! I mean, and you were talking about Dave Ellis, okay? When I met Dave Ellis, we were doing this TV pilot. Hal always had a knack to get everybody to work for nothing to mm -hmm. do these pilots and <laughs> commercials. We did a commercial one time, and, they, and everybody went to get paid. They go, well, I haven't even sold it yet. It was for Gillette. It was for Gillette Razor Blades. And Hal says, well, I haven't sold the commercial yet. How are you going to get Who's going to pay you? 
<laughs> it was all on stunts. We did another thing called the, it was called stunts. I think. Remember that? No, I don't. But that's so how. <laughs> it was called the stuntman or stunts, and they were they were they were uh, secrets. They were CIA. They were CIA guys disguised as stunt guys. That was their day job with stuntmen. Uh-huh. And David Ellis. That's when I met David Ellis. We're in a house in Van Nuys in the daytime. The sun is glaring. And David's got this burn suit on, and Hal wants a, um, a full burn, right? And poor David Ellis, we did this thing, and Hal laid him. And he's looking at the monitor in the playback. He can't see the fire. And he he said, you call out a fire? You you know, and that was the trouble. He intimidated everybody. And um, he said, you call that a burn? That's a burn? Is that what you call a burn? And, you know, he said, give me that. Give me that suit. I'll show you what a burn is. And then, but David didn't have that. He he got intimidated, and then uh, and he they did it again, and and, uh, and I said and I said to Hal, I said you got nothing to do with that burn. I said give the guy a break. I said it was the it's the lighting there. I said you got you get yourself another lighting director. I said you know, and uh, so then he so the poor lighting guy. He, <laughs> we we weren't buddies after that. I was going to say but he must have hated you. <laughs> it's the truth. I said, "What are we going to do? We're going to hurt this guy because because he can't light it." I said, "Come on." It's got to be and, a little dark and, to see the fire. Well, he was he intimidated. Uh, everybody was getting hurt, and, and one guy broke his arm. He stuck his arm out of the airplane to catch catch something and broke it off. Uh, uh, well, you know, you but how direct that? You saw how uh, Nina when he jumped out of an airplane and tackled a guy off of a horse. I mean, that's how tough he was. No, he was, uh, I mean, he, he, yeah, just, just tough. But the trouble is, you know, then he expected that. From everybody. On everybody. Yeah. It's just like, you know, everybody's not, you know, you want to make it look right. You want to make it look good. And, and, uh, uh, but you, we don't want to hurt people. No. And, uh, uh, you know, then how I tied in with those guys with that, uh, that jet car, the Fredericks, they did that jet car. Oh, didn't they set the but little Hal speed was record? A, Hal was a nice, genuine guy. I always loved the story about Hal Needham and how he got that movie, to, uh, Smokey, at, at Universal. Smokey and the Band. And he's got the script, and he goes to Universal and says, I've got this script. And they go, and they, they said, yeah, okay, everybody's got a script. He says, yeah, but everybody doesn't have Burt Reynolds. You got, they said, you got Burt Reynolds? Yeah, I got Burt Reynolds. Well, we're in. Yep. Well, there's a catch. There's a catch. He, What's the catch? Burt wants me to direct it. <laughs> <laughs> the, it, it, hey, oh, it worked. Does? It worked, yeah. didn't it? That so thing... then he goes to Hal. He says, Hal. I just presented this script to Universal. They love it. They want to do it. We're in. Okay. What? And he said, but there's a catch. What's the catch? They want me to direct you. <laughs> 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 that's the best story. And that's how that spooky in the panic got me. And, and John, and, that uh, film did, I mean, back in the day, it, it did over $250 million at the box office. I mean, that was a oh, huge, it, huge success. Yeah, great. Great. Yeah. You know? Hey, but, uh, I, I asked you a question yeah. earlier, and you completely avoided it. You dodged it on on purpose because I know how you are, and I I need an answer from you. And I I'm hoping it will be yes. Will you come on and do another stunt stories with me? Uh, yes, is it going to be? Hey. You're at forty five fifty nine right now. Yeah, just say uh, yes. So when do you want to do the next one? I don't know. It'll be in a. In a why don't Why don't you do this? Why don't you Why don't you ask your viewers? The ten, the ten viewers. Seven. They There's only seven. Back. Okay, so I do a vote for. You. <laughs> I'll ask my seven <laughs> listeners if they want to have you back, and I know at least one or two of them are going to say yes. And so that's. So where's, where, 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 do we, where do we cut off that? We got seven listeners. Are we going to say four, four yes, and I'm and I'm back? Yes, it's got to be a majority vote. I think we. I, I think it's name? looking pretty positive. I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen, John. <laughs> Listen, I appreciate your time so much. I love you. Well, I tell you what, when I, come, when I come back, we'll do the finished story of the Academy Awards. Wait, wait, where are you coming back from? Where are you going? No, no, when I go, when, when, you, when you get, uh, when, you, when you take a poll. Oh, I'm okay. Coming back. 
okay, well, don't be disappointed if, if nobody wants you back. I think they're all going to want you back because I know I do, and, and you've got so many more stories to tell. And you're a good storyteller. My gosh, I could sit here and listen to you all day. I love you, John Frazier. Thank you so much. And everybody, thank Anytime, you. Anytime, buddy. You're the best. Love you, man. Thank you, John. How's Dad doing? Dad's doing awesome. He's doing good. fantastic. Great guy. Great guy. Well, thanks uh, again, buddy. I appreciate you. Okay, I'm, I, I appreciate the call. All right. We'll do this again. Oh, awesome. There it is. That was a yes. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> All right, Corey. Right. You have a great evening. You too, buddy. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Stunt Stories.